Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to Elevating Lives. Rise Life Services is a not-for-profit located in our headquarters located in Riverhead, but we have 32 residential sites throughout Suffolk County. We have an outpatient clinic. We have a day program. We have two food pantries, and we just opened up a 24,000-square-foot building in Huntington that has become a cultural center that features music, art, dance, a day program. It's going to have a food pantry. It's going to have an outpatient clinic. And it's really the first of its kind, I believe, in America. So I'm excited about 2023, and I look forward to providing the services. Uh, I get many calls from individuals who say, Charlie, uh, my son or daughter have cerebral palsy. Uh, they may have autism, whatever the category may be. Call our 855-RISE-HELP, and we can help you with that number. We can answer your questions. We may be able to provide the services. And if we can't provide the services, we will find the services for you. So we're here to help. Today, I'd like to welcome my guest, Hassam Maksud. He is the CEO of Community Cares uh, Group. And welcome, Hassam. Thank you very much for having me today, oh, Charles. More than welcome. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about yourself first. Uh, well, uh, I'm a pharmacist. Um, I... Uh, opened many retail pharmacies uh, in New York State, uh, New York, uh, in Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn. And then uh, 15 years ago, we decided to take a, a different turn and, and go into uh, dedicated services to long-term care facilities, including many of the nonprofit uh, organizations that work with uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities uh, clients. Um, and since then, that really took off, uh, and uh, we stayed away from the retail operation. And a couple of years ago, we went into manufacturing, and uh, we're going through that pass right now, but we are running it parallel to our services to long-term care facilities. Wow. And so you, you manufacture your product also? Uh, it's not our product. So we were manufacturing, we're focused on sterile products okay. uh, through the CMO routes. So right now we're uh, sending our files to our first file to the FDA and we're waiting for uh, hopefully an approval very soon. That'll be great. Yeah, that will be nice. This is actually was, you know, one of the, the, the things that I always wanted to do, never really had the time. Uh, or, or the you know the, the financial uh, capabilities to do it is very expensive, but uh, you know this is something that uh, I think we can be very helpful with, especially when it comes to certain drugs that's always in short supply here in the U.S. No, no question, especially with managed care and health costs going up the way they have been over the years, it's just amazing that. Uh, the, medic, med, the medical field is uh, out of control, in my opinion. It, it is. It, it's it's very expensive, but, you know, we have one of the best systems in, in the world still. And if you want something that really uh, advanced, it, it, it costs. It's costly. Uh, so, you know, you have to look at it, uh, you, you know, from two different angles. Uh, and But there is also a lot of things we can do just to lower these costs down and, and prevent many of the waste. That, uh, that that really uh, happens out there. And uh, uh, th that's something I think it's a uh, responsibility of everyone, not just the government. So is most of your uh, product online? Is it uh, through, you know, salespersons or? Uh, yeah, we, we have actually, it's a, a B2B business. So most of our business right now uh, focus on uh, surfacing group homes, uh, assisted living and nursing home facilities. We uh, we pretty much uh, help uh, them with the dispensing, but also on the clinical side, uh, we help many of these uh, facilities to understand uh, the type of medications we're giving, monitor the, the medications. Uh, when our clinical pharmacists visit the facilities, we make sure that everything lined up with the charts uh, that they have or the MARS that they have. Uh, we look for duplicate therapy. We look for uh, doses that may be inappropriate. So the, 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 it's not just uh, for us, it's not just dispensing. And also on the dispensing part, we have uh, packaging that makes it much more easier uh, to comply with and for residents that here and for the staff also 
uh, to, uh, to administer. So, but besides the dispensing, I think the clinical component of our services are really very important to the population we service. No, I happen to like the dispensing piece because it makes it a lot easier uh, for a consumer or an individual or the staff that are working at the site. Yeah, and 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 I just want to you know also elaborate on that. Uh, you know, most of the staff is is familiar with it, uh, and they understand it, and it makes it much easier for them to to follow and to know when the medication is going to end up, so you don't end up with a surprise. Uh, you know, quantity at the last minute that's not enough for the residents, but we're taking this program further uh, to uh, families at home. So, it, it, which is becomes much more difficult for parents to really to handle some of these medications in their own work with insurance companies, trying to find out what's really listed and covered under their insurance versus things that's not covered. Uh, packaging also makes it much easier for them to monitor. Uh, their children or the ones that they care for. So we're not just giving this right now to the facilities. We're making a new program for independent living and supportive housing uh, residents. Now, the families that need the prescription, can they get a prescription through your company? Yeah. So, so it, it only involves individuals who have a disability uh, autism or whatever the category may be. Uh, absolutely. I mean, this is the area where we focus on because this is the area where you know most parents really uh, struggle with and uh, and it's different than just uh, you know a parent who needs an antibiotic prescription once we're talking about maintenance medications medication that the ch you know the, the child or the adult will be taking for a long time uh, and monitoring these medications helping the parents uh, or taking at least that complicated piece out of their daily routine can be very helpful to them uh, we're also doing this for uh, schools who cater or surface uh, children with developmental or intellectual disabilities uh, for the parents. So that program is Learn My Meds. We want them to learn what medications are taken, what the purpose of these medications, why you have to take it and be compliant with that. Uh, you'll be very surprised sometimes that, you know, people will skip the medications and if something really, you know, or if they don't feel anything different right. in a day or two, they think it's okay to continue until really then, uh, you know, starting to, to, to be in trouble. So it, there is a lot of pieces that we like to help individuals outside also of the uh, facilities. Uh, right. I mean, uh, you're, you're pro providing the educational piece, which is important. Right. Because I know when I get my prescription from CVS or Walgreens, right. I got to read up on it. What does it do? What are these side effects? It, uh, it, you provide that service. That, that that's a nice little effect, there, no it, question. It, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. It helps many people. Uh, it, you know, uh, you know. Fortunately for residents in facilities like uh, your your eyes, for example, you have nursing staff, you have uh, mid coordinators, so you, you have a lot of uh, you know support staff for the individuals that reside within your uh, organization. Rise, but think about people who do not have that, and they're just you know, caring for their loved ones at home and the difficulties that they may have just trying to uh, monitor their kids' medications. So the products you sell online, the B2B, yeah. um, is it like CVS where you, instead of going into CVS or Walgreens, they come online to your site and they can order what they need? They, they can. Uh, they, they can. We, we don't, you know, it's still we, we catering to, to, to the organi you know, to the facilities like yourself. Mm -hmm. So most of these uh, products right now is uh, gloves, uh, is mid cups are, you know, uh, with uh, diagnostic supplies. So it, it's not like you're not going to see uh, oh. the cosmetics, uh, right, right. You, you know, you're not going to see the Christmas card, you know, really. all, all of that. <laughs> so it's really much, very, very much tailored to the medical, uh, right. uh, you know, needs. So if you place an order, how long does it take? A, you know, if I place an order, how long does it take yeah. to, uh, to get you? So if, if you place an order, pretty much it's the same day if it's before a uh, certain cutoff time. So before one o'clock or so, if not, it's the second day delivery. And, uh, you know, and we're uh, pretty much in. Uh, so you're quicker than Amazon. Uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, we're trying at least to compete with them. <laughs> they're, they're competing with us now in the pharmacy uh, area. So, you know, you, you have uh, to be competitive. And that's what we're trying to do. So your drivers deliver the product? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we, we have drivers. We have a, a fleet of uh, uh, trucks that they go out uh, pretty much uh, all over. Where, where is your warehouse located? Or 
Uh, we are in Hempstead, New York. Uh, probably in a couple of weeks, uh, we're gonna be in Plainview. Uh, knock on wood. It's a state oh, of very nice. Yeah, it's a, you know it's tripling the size of our uh, uh, space uh, because we're you know we're lucky enough to uh, you know grow our business and uh, we're very happy about that. Excited, uh, but uh, you know. Moving is not easy. <laughs> I know. So, I, I, I hate to move, when I have to move out of my house. Like the yeah, stuff I haven't done, it's yeah, a pain. Yeah, no. I, I told my wife I'm not moving. <laughs> you know, we like it the way it is, but we cannot move. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult situation. But we have a timeline, and we're very much know exactly what to do and when to do it. So, you know, it's gonna go hopefully very smoothly. So you can provide services in New Jersey, New York State, yeah, and Delaware, anywhere on the, yeah. on the East Coast, or yeah. really the country. We're trying to be an, an East Coast uh, okay. company. I, I, you know, I don't want to really expand beyond okay. that uh, unless really it's necessary, and unless really, uh, you know, we have the means to do that. So, I, you know, customer service to us is extremely important. Uh, being in control is is you know of of, uh, of the operation is very important. So. You know, and, and that's something I, I learned a long time. So, you know, even when issues comes in, uh, you know, we have an electronic platform issuing a ticket. The first people who get these tickets are me and all my C-level staff before it even goes down really? uh, to yeah. everyone else. Because I want to see what really happens and I want to see if we can not just, uh, you know, uh, prevent things, uh, you know, or take care of things right now. I want to be proactive and fix the problem so it doesn't really happen again. And usually you need you know, uh, you people a little bit, uh, you, you know, uh, with back uh, knowledge about, uh, you know, processes to put the structure and the protocols in place for everybody else to follow. So if I'm a not-for-profit, uh, I want to buy you through, you know, your company. Yeah. What would you say, a guesstimate, what would you say versus CBS or Walgreens or right. one of the big distributors? Um, I, I, again, yeah, you know, price probably, you know, because we we focus in, in making sure that these pricing are, are really very competitive for the agencies that we service. We, we know that, you know, many of these agencies having difficult time with, uh, you know, state budget uh, cuts uh, and everything else. And, and, you know, you probably can talk about that in 10 different episodes. Uh, so we, we try to really be very, uh, you know, uh, understanding of your needs and, and be very competitive. So this is one area also the differences uh, we, we, the clinical side of what we do, the clinical side is extremely very uh, effective, helpful to the staff and to the residency service. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I know uh, in our field, there's a lot of turnover. Uh, you need, you have to train and re-educate. That's an important piece for me. Yeah. Uh, and I, I know that you do a great job. With yeah, it, it is uh, actually Charles for everyone. So, you know, I always try to tweet and, and find out solutions because uh, you know, we're really suffering. You, us, everybody in healthcare uh, of lack of, uh, you know, uh, qualified people uh, who can take on the job. It's, it's not an easy job to handle. Uh, you know, most of your staff needs to be trained and retrained and understand rules and regulations. Same thing with us. So uh, that that's things that, you know, I think on a higher level, uh, we as a country have to figure out a solution to bring in qualified workers to, to the workforce. Great. Uh, my guest is Hossam Maksud. He's the CEO of Community Cares. Tell me, how can they reach you if they have a question or want to possibly do business? What's the best way to contact uh, they, It's It's very easy. Just, uh, you know, Google Community Care Rx. Uh, we are uh, 724. Uh, our website is comcare, C O M M C A R E R X dot com. And uh, we'll be glad to help anyone with advice, with questions. Uh, so that doesn't really have to be that uh, uh, you have to buy anything, uh, but we're here for you and for Long Island. That's great. Tell me a little about your foundation. Uh, yeah. that, I didn't know you had a foundation. Yeah, uh, yeah. We uh, so you know my family. We started this foundation uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, it comes back from my experience in retail. 
uh, and, and also with some of the facilities uh, that we surface. So, you know, you'll be very surprised, really, when you have a senior citizen coming into a pharmacy and cannot afford, uh, you know, uh, $10 or $5 copay, especially when they're having, you know, five or six medications. Uh, so that adds, uh, you know, a, a lot uh, to their budget and becomes burdensome. So we decided that anyone who meets certain qualifications uh, and income level uh, and who ha who has uh, a problem paying for their copays that the foundation will help assist uh, with their medications up to three hundred dollars uh, a year in covering some of these copays. You had mentioned that uh, like staff at Rise or other not for profits, their employees uh, can also get this benefit. Is yes, that correct? Absolutely. If they meet the qualifications, they will get these benefits. So uh, by all means, I also tell HR uh, to. Spread the news. Let them know. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's it's not just you know some copays right now are especially for certain specialty medications are not just five dollars or ten dollars anymore. So you're talking about like fifty dollars, hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, so we, we try as much as we can. Not only that, but we also seek other foundations out there, and we see uh, when we see to it that they can cover some of these expenses and. Even contacting manufacturers, because even maybe a lot of people don't understand that some manufacturer, uh, some companies have certain coupons and, and programs to assist with the uh, client's uh, co-pays. Um, tell me a little about yourself now. Where did you, where do you, where'd you grow up? Where, you know? yeah. uh, so I, I, I grew up in, in Egypt and, um, um, you know, my dad is, is a pharmacist and uh, he wanted... Oh, your dad uh, was a pharmacist? He was a pharmacist. Oh, okay. In the, in the family, huh? Yeah, it's in the family. Uh, so he uh, he sent uh, me over to England. I stayed there uh, for two years and I transferred to St. John's uh, where I graduated. And uh, I was supposed to go back. I never did. Uh, <laughs> and I started my own business uh, in here, but... Uh, uh, then my brothers followed the same track, and they're now overseas helping with the operation. Uh, and uh, you know, it's 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 home now uh, here, uh, and uh, I just love what we do, and we love helping people. And uh, I really, you know, some people say, "Okay, so did you miss retail?" I said, "You know, I I really did not miss retail that much because when I moved to help people in." facilities like Rise and, and others, uh, it's so much rewarding because uh, you're helping so many people in, in a different level uh, that, uh, you know, you have to be really very strong, very uh, client service oriented. You work with nursing staff and, 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 right. and, and a team of healthcare workers. So it brings you to a higher level a little bit than the retail. And I enjoy that uh, very much. How many employees do you have? Uh, currently, we're around 125 employees wow. uh, between our two sites in New York and New Jersey. Uh, we started surfacing uh, Delaware. Uh, so, you know, our next stop, uh, I don't know, maybe Pennsylvania, uh, somewhere in there uh, for our third site. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Now, what, what other agencies, you know, like, is it free or IGHL? Or it, it, yeah, no, we, we, we surface, uh, you, you know, many agencies like uh, RISE, uh, of course, Life Aspire, uh, Head Injuries, Catholic Charities, uh, Block Institute. Uh, we surface unique people services, uh, options uh, for community services, uh, and, and many more, UMC, uh, some of the arcs sure yeah so it's uh it's you know it's uh, a good bunch of uh, agencies now do you see managed care having an effect on our industry uh yeah i mean i, I again i always like to, to look for the positive and the mm -hmm. negative uh you, you know I, I i think they're trying to control costs but i think they're also uh, trying to be the physician being a pharmacist and feeling, you know, some of the symptoms of the patients. So, we, we, you know, on my end, at least, when we get prescriptions and it's not covered by the insurance, uh, 
and you, then you have to go through the prior authorization. So, you know, it's it's a lot of uh, uh, bureaucracy that I think we they have to limit a little bit because I think limiting it probably will save them more money uh, for managed care. Uh, you know, in, in New York State, Medicaid is taking over, at least on the pharmacy uh, side. So let's see how that works. But um, hopefully the system will be much easier understanding the needs of the clients. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what we're looking for. We're very fortunate to have our staff who are essential employees that really care. You have, in this field, you need a caring person. And I call them angels because they, they're dedicated to helping the population we serve with. And it, it's just amazing. Uh, how they come in during the pandemic. There were times they had to work 24-7 for a whole week or two weeks straight, and they just came to do, to help out, and it was great. And that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Uh, if people have the opportunity to, to take a tour and come and, and visit and meet with uh, you know your staff, they, really un they will understand uh, the, the need and the services you're providing to the community at large. So I, I just want to, yeah, you know, and we, and we do our own thing. So every year we decided that we have to honor the right. staff that we work with. And many times we work together. That's and great. Very good with. But I want to thank you for coming on our show. Thank you very much for and, having uh, me. And look forward to working with you in the future, too. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank Hassan. you for the opportunity. And again, Happy New Year to all. And hopefully 2023 is a lot better than the last two years.